Today we're going to talk about why cassava is gaining grounds in recent times in the country, that is Ghana and also in the world. So if this is your first time of visiting our channel, I'm pleading with you to just kindly hit on the subscription button you see on the screen and also turn on the post notification bell that whenever we upload new videos, you'll be the first person to actually get a notification on or to get an alert on your device. So the reasons why cassava is gaining grounds in recent times, you know, in recent times, we realize that when you get to a lot of communities or some of the communities in the country that I have actually been to, there is scarcity of cassava stems. Yes, there is scarcity of cassava, shortage of cassava stems. And um, the communities that also have are actually selling them at a very higher price. So it's very, very expensive now to, you know, to get cassava stems for planting. It is very, very expensive. So it is not only the roots that is also gaining grounds in recent times, but then the stem is also becoming a lucrative business for those who actually have them in stock so uh, next time you think of cassava farm you don't only think about the roots also but then know that the stems are also gaining grounds in recent times but then why is the recent time well, cassava is gaining grounds in recent times so um chill us and let's talk about this right here on this channel and in ghana we cry we all remember that when the current government that's the government that is now in power it, it took over from the previous government they rolled up certain things they called one district one factory which actually was focusing on you know communities that they can actually establish companies that they would actually produce some of these crops so that the companies can actually buy from the indigenous and use in production of um, whatever purpose of which the company is you know actually established and this has in one way or the other year the fruitful result and they've been able to you know establish some of the companies in some of their communities and they've actually been able to invest in some already existing companies in some of these localities that were actually you know at the verge of collapsing so they actually invested money in some of these companies so uh <clears throat> making it very very good for some of the smallholder farmers to actually uh, started growing crops like cassava because they know that definitely or for sure there is a company that is close by or closer that would actually be buying from them so the government support so that is the first point which is actually a reason why most people are now you know going into cassava cultivation so the government support so the government's industrialization drive and initiative like the one district one factory policy are encouraging the establishment of more industries including cassava processing factories so like i explained these are some of the reasons why certain individuals feel that there is a need to actually go into cassava farming and the second point is increasing demand so demand for cassava is increasing both domestically and regionally with an estimated latent demand growth rate of 1.6 million metric tons per annum so that is also another reason why a lot of people are now venturing into cassava farming because they realize that there is an increase there is increase and demand <coughs> the demand is getting higher day in day out so they actually have to you know, go into cassava farm because if you should be able to you know farm on a larger quantity or on a, on a larger scope you are automatically going to get buyers to come on board to come and buy your cassava <clears throat> or the cassava roots and you're also going to make some cool cash out of the cassava stem so the economic opportunities too is also another point which is actually moving a lot of individuals to start venturing into cassava cultivation so the cassava industry presents enormous economic opportunities for smallholder farmers with an estimated annual demand of over 200,000 metric tons of starch so this is the demand right so once they need this you know a lot of people have to produce to be able to meet this particular demand so one of the reasons is over 200,000 metric tons of starch so you basically have to know that yes indeed we have to produce more to be able to meet this particular requirement annually and improved varieties is also another reason why most people are now venturing into cassava corn. obviously you know most of our parents when they want to venture into crop production or they want to go into cassava cultivation they usually have specific types of varieties that they do plant but then there are improved varieties now that help farmers to you know one when it's come to weather conditions they have improved some of these varieties that can be able to withstand the weather conditions that can be able to withstand drought that can be able to you know withstand some localities and some type of soil they can be able to you know endure in some communities too as well so research institutions are 
developing improved varieties, improved cassava varieties with higher yields and start quantity, making cassava production more attractive to farming. So they are not only focusing on the weather conditions too as well, but then they also producing um, cassava varieties that can be able to produce higher um, starch contents too as well because basically uh, most of these starch content products are actually going to be used in production larger scale production for industrial purposes so the starch content has to actually be high and be also making production more more and more attractive to you know farmers and private sector investment is also another point there so the private companies are investing in cassava processing and production providing a market for smallholder farmers and creating jobs so because this, some of these private um, sector um, uh, companies are also in need of the cassava they are actually uh, pushing in more cash more and more cash into this sector so that they can also be getting the produce from the farm which can actually be used in you know their production purposes which is actually creating jobs for you know most of the farmers or the smallholder farmers because at the end of the year they are actually going to come and buy your produce from the farm which will be used in producing other stuff like flour ethanol and also can be used in doing a whole lot of things extracting of you know starch and coal for book binding and other form of, uh, form of activities uh, last somewhere last two years when i went to break home, I realized that they were using the cassava for plywood making. So that's what the adhesive they were actually they extract, uh, they make, they use the cassava for an adhesive and they use it in binding the plywood together. So that was one thing that I actually also went to witness in Brekun. Brekun, that was last two years. So that is one major factor. And food security is also another point right here. And um, cassava is an important crop for food security in Ghana. Uh, contributing to about 22 percent of agricultural gross domestic product and 30 percent of daily calories intake so basically you know farmers when they, they actually have to you know, think about the food security aspect a lot of people will actually vent into that and also go for and plant more and more of cassava so that they will be able to you know <coughs> actually meet all this kind of demand so increasing processing so Increasing processing of cassava into various products such as starch, flour, ethanol, and is creating new economic opportunities and is an uh, increasing demand for cassava. So, like I explained earlier on, because some of these companies are now focusing on using cassava for starch, using it for ethanol, and also using it for flour, um, <clears throat> there is there is actually always has to be you know, higher demand for cassava because on a daily basis production is happening and all these companies will need cassava to be able to you know move or to be able to achieve their goals and their purposes for which they establish their various companies so if you want to produce flour you actually need the cassava once that is your means of production you actually have to you know go get cassava if it is um starch definitely you have to, you have to also go for cassava and one aspect is also support for smallholder farmers so Initiatives like the Ghana Cassava Industrialization Partnership Project are providing support to smallholder farmers to improve their productivity and link them to sustainable markets. So, you know, if I farmer, you know, there is this particular project or this initiative is there, we would be encouraged, you know, to produce more to be able to you know, get people to come on board because you know that once you are able to, you know, produce, you would actually get people to come on board to buy because one of the headaches in this country or in Ghana as a farmer or in general as a farmer is you going to plant and your crops and you sow you plant your crops and at the end of the season or after harvesting you don't get people to come and buy you don't get consumers to come and consume what you produce that's one of the headaches of most of the farmers especially a smallholder farmers in our economy or in our country so if this initiative is there you will definitely know that there is actually going to be ready market for your produce so you don't have to actually struggle because mind you cassava is being used for so many things in the world like fufu gari cassava flour you can use it in baking so this can actually be used in baking cooking and also thickening it's also it also serves as a thickening agent and you, you can also get tapioca out of it you can also get a uh, uh, farufa farofa out of it which is a crispy toasted cassava flour dish from brazil often served with meat or beans so mandioca is also there it's also a stable food 
in Brazil made by boiling or roasting cassava and yuca fries is also there in cassava potage a uh, comforting starchy soup made with cassava and vegetables so uh, Pakpili, Pakpili is also there so that's a Ghanaian dish made with fermented cassava and spices and Acheke. Acheke is also a Cote d'Ivoire dish made with fermented cassava and fish and cassava cake you know cassava cake uh, that is Kakula. I think that's how they call it right and cassava cake is also there so that's a sweet moist cake made with cassava fly and often served with cocoa not or fruit and how about the tapioca yes tapioca is also there so basically cassava can be used in producing a lot of things and not forgetting about the cassava itself which can be used in feeding livestock like pig and you can actually you know use the pills in feeding goats and a lot of you know livestock usually depend on this cassava the leaves as well can also be used in feeding livestock so having spoken or having explained all these reasons why there is higher demand for cassava or why cassava is gaining grass in recent time then why would there be shortage of cassava sticks in our or there would there be scarcity of cassava sticks in our country or in various in our various communities so these are some of the reasons why there are the scarcity of the cassava stems well higher demand so and limited supply disease and pest attacks weather conditions so um adverse weather conditions such as drought or flooding can impact cassava stem production so last year myself i packed numerous or so many sticks of cassava uh, under a shade right but due to the intense nature of the drought most of them actually got bent or most of them actually got destroyed because the kamatan was very severe so the shade under which i put the cassava the tree actually got weeded so the sun has to you know penetrate to actually hit the stems directly which actually got most of them bent so um that is one of the major aspects why one one of the major reasons why we lack in cassava stems in the system now and one also factor is lack of storage facility you know we don't have storage facilities when it's coming to you know preservation of cassava stems so basically at the end of the season if you don't get any proper place to you know preserve your cassava stems you are actually going to run out of cassava stems so you don't actually have to go follow different individuals now unless you would still have some on the field some of the cassava on the field that you you are yet to uproot or you haven't uproot yet with that you can actually go uproot them and you would use the stems in planting for the new season but aside from that if you've already uprooted them and you want to preserve them you don't have the storage facility if care is not taken you are going to lose all of them before the next season comes into being so lack of storage facilities is also another factor so poor farming practices so in the inadequate farming price such as poor soil management can reduce cassava use and stem as well so limited access to improved variety so Ghanaian farmers may have limited access to high yield and disease resistant cassava varieties which can actually result in scarcity of the stem so once you don't get improved varieties would definitely was definitely going to hit you is you would actually start lacking stems in the subsequent season that is going to you know follow but then if you should be able to get improved varieties that can be able to withstand all those you know um conditions that i made mention of earlier on then mind you still you're still going to get your cassava stems to you know plant for the next season so competition from other crops so other crops like maize rice or soya beans may compete with cassava for land needing to reduce cassava stem availability so lack of government support we know this in ghana insufficient government support for cassava farming such as subsidies or extensive services can contribute to scarcity so market dynamics so fluctuations in market demand and prices can lead to hoarding or reduced production of cassava stem so these are some of the reasons why there is scarcity of cassava stems in the system now and in communities where people have cassava stems they are selling them at a very higher higher cost because it's expensive is becoming something lucrative a lucrative venture for most farmers that you actually have to you know go sell your roots that's cassava roots root. after selling the roots you can actually sell the stems to also make some cash out of it so next time you think of you know farming or you think of any form of farming to think of cassava farming because it's very lucrative and there is always ready market for your cassava produce and you are not going to you know so far to get people to come and buy them once you are done you actually get people to come and buy your cassava so think of cassava farming in my subsequent videos i'm going to bring on board i'm actually going to talk about some communities that have lands you know some communities that 
uh, indigenous have lands or families have family lands that they will be leasing or they are actually hiring for farming purposes at a very reduced price so just watch our stick and stay with this channel subscribe and turn on the post notification that when i bring you update on that particular or that community that individuals have land that they are listening for you know farming activities you would be the first person to get a notification and if you are interested or you are in the diaspora and you want to you know farm you can actually go to some of these communities and you'll get individuals that are loyal individuals that will be able to you know help you to actually uh, invest your money into agriculture and you will never regret it so uh, until then catch you in another episode